to get started today, we need three things. We need some kind of knife. It could be a butter knife, a plastic knife. As long as it will cut, you could even use a paper clip. Your clay is not very um, firm at this point. You'll need your three and a half by eight um, rectangle that I gave you in class. And if you don't have that, you can kind of just gauge it um, by if you have a ruler at home you can use any piece of paper and i even have some stamps but you could use anything to make texture even if you did not bring your stamp with you the other thing you need is some kind of um something like a napkin a paper towel anything that you have um, that will keep your clay from suctioning to the table so you just need something to keep it from doing that my clay is a little bit longer than what I need it to be, which is fine because I need to trim this anyway. And your first job is simply going to be to take your stamp or whatever you're texturing with, and you're just simply going to start texturizing the whole piece. And so I'm pushing down and I'm just kind of getting um, this little pattern going and I'm just kind of turning my stencil so it kind of overlaps and it doesn't look... Um, you know, too patterny. I kind of want it just to be random. It is your choice how you lay that down, but I'm just kind of applying this. Um, we don't want to push too hard because we don't want to make the clay too thin, but you just want to check it from time to time and make sure you've got enough done so that the texture fills the whole entire um, part of your clay. So you're, you may be a little deformed at this point because it may have squished it out, but you're gonna lay your template on here and then you're going to cut it out. So I'm just literally trimming around this part and I don't want to push too hard on the clay at this point because I don't want to squish the texture. I wanna leave the texture on there. Oops, got a little crazy there. You'll pull this away just like it was cookie dough it works the same and I'm keeping this extra clay um, and I'm just going to basically squeeze it, try not to create air bubbles and I'm just going to kind of smush it together carefully and put it back into a ball and set it aside. At this point, we want to look at um, the shape of the cell phone holder. We want to look at the cell phone holders to help us understand what works well for them and what doesn't. This holder is basically that slab rolled up and you can see a wider roll at the back, a smaller roll in the front. When the cell phone sits in here, it basically gets cradled to the point that the cell phone can stand up like this. One of the things that's important to remember is this area right here cannot be too wide. So this one works okay because it doesn't allow, um, it's almost a little tight for my cell phone. So you may want to have your cell phone handy, but you can see that my cell phone still fits in this groove with its case on, but it doesn't have a lot of room to wiggle in here. So it stands up really nicely right here, but I have one right here and this one when I put my cell phone in it actually falls backwards. So there's a couple reasons for that and this one has too much room right here. So it's too, um, too long. So when my cell phone sits in there and it has the opportunity to lean back, it actually falls over because it has room to slide forward and it puts all the weight of this plus my phone rocking it backwards like a sleigh. So it's really important when we do this that we make sure that our thickness here is not much wider than what our cell phone um, is going to be. And I did have one student whose um, cell phone case had some little holes, so she actually used her phone case to push this in. But you can see in all of these that we have um, texture and the glaze is flowing into um, the texture. And she actually used some different texture, um, some different patterns with her stamps on here. This one was again, just kind of some different kinds of stamps that I just rotated. So it's just kind of fun to see how the glaze flows into um, 
some of those areas and just create something interesting. So this one, of course, was glazed with two different colors. So let's talk about how we're going to roll these up. In order for my stamp to have the texture on the front roll, it needs to be flipped over. So I'm going to be gently, so I don't um, mess this up. I'm gonna put the texture side down, but I'm gonna try not to touch it. Now, a good rule of thumb is whenever you're rolling clay, it's going to need to move very gently. So I'm just gently using my thumbs to kind of push and slowly convince the clay that it needs to bend. Because if you really rush this and you're not being gentle with it, it can develop cracks pretty quickly. And what I'm trying to do is just roll this up, almost like a little Swiss roll. So I'm just gently with my fingers pushing it here and encouraging this to roll. Now, once the roll gets to be a little bit bigger, you can actually just kind of let it roll a little bit more. But if you roll it really um, quickly, you might get some cracks in here and they're just hard to get your fingers in there to fix it. What this looks like from the side is I'm getting kind of this airy, kind of big curl. And it's okay if you see places where it's gonna break, because I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. But I'm just kind of looking and paying attention to it from the side. And when I kind of feel like I get it about halfway, I'm gonna stop and I'm going to do the other end. And then we'll have to fine tune it when we get it here. Um, I have seen some people try to put in things like a pencil. The only problem is if you wind it too tight, it may end up getting stuck in there. But if that helps you to kind of guide you, you can do that. Just make sure you're not doing it too tight um, so you can actually roll your pencil in there. Now, this is the part where I have to really start figuring out um, how thick it needs to be for my cell phone. And so right now, you could even put a piece of saran wrap. You could... Um, let me swipe up and get these things off of here. You could grab a little piece of paper towel to kind of protect your phone while you test it in here and just kind of support it. But this is leaning quite a bit. So I know that this is too much. And if we compare it to the one I have, I have too much room there. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the back one. You might need to kind of tap it down to encourage it not to unroll, and then try again. So again, I'm gonna kind of put my phone in here and see if it appears to kind of fit in there nicely. So it's important not to get it too tight. Um, so this looks pretty good to me. I know this works pretty well for my phone. So now I'm gonna start looking at the sides. And this is where you're just gonna wanna kind of squeeze and pinch and start smoothing any edges. If you had any rips and tears, the clay hopefully is soft enough that you can kind of just get your fingers in here and just kind of blend it to where it looks okay to you. But once you kind of have it where you like it, I would just look at it from the side, squeezing and pinching it and letting it dry. But this just kind of, about the thickness of my um, my finger is a pretty good gauge for what most phones can fit in and lean back. And the beautiful thing about this, other than holding it up, is it really magnifies sound. So when sound kind of comes out of your phone, um, it really amplifies the sound as it kind of rolls through the coils of your cell phone holder. So again, you'll have a big one on the back to support the phone, a little one on the front to give it some weight, and then just make sure that you have enough room for your cell phone to stand up without leaning too far back. You're going to let this get, I would let this sit out. It can get air um, leather hard or bone dry, whichever way you think is easier to get you back to school. And then we'll be able to fire that and glaze it when you come back.